Hi everyone, it's me Darlene. I am back with another tutorial. I think you're going to like this one, especially if you have a cat or a dog or any pet who wants a blankie. If you don't have a pet, you can always make this bigger. When we are done, we're going to have a big square, maybe about 27 inches square, and you could always make four of those and just put them together like a big four patch and you'd have a big, uh, a big throw quilt, or you could uh, make six and do two, 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 and it would be wide enough and quite long that should easily cover uh, a twin size bed. This little pet quilt, since it's going to be small and manageable, I plan on backing it. I even might add the batting if I can find the batting. It's in a box behind me somewhere. But I won't make a promise. Let's just see how this goes first. We're going to be making it with a strip set, but it's going to end up looking like checkerboard. Very, very cool. You need five strips, all different and mine are six inches wide. Before I forget, I will have a kit with these strips pre-cut for you to size, so all you have to do is sew them together. You will have to add your own backing and batting, but the kit will at least include the strips if you end up liking the way this comes out. I don't know how many yet because I haven't cut them yet, but do go look down below in the description and you will see the um, the link to that. I will also have this completed little pet quilt on eBay starting at a penny. Free shipping for USA. Outside of USA must pay shipping. So do go check all that out. So far I have cut my five strips six inches wide. If you want to make this bigger with what ends up looking like bigger blocks, you can cut your strips wider. Here's the math. I have six inch strips. Six times five is 30. So my strips need to be 30 inches long. If you did seven inch strips, seven times five is 35. So you would need your strips to be 35 inches long. Eight inch strips, that would be 40. You would need your strips to be 40 inches long. Do check because if you happen to be using flannel, did I even tell you this is flannel? Flannels can be short. Sometimes it's hard to even get a 40 inch strip. The selvages can be very wide, so always check. But yes, this is flannel. I had a shipment of flannel not too long ago, and I sold a lot of it, and this is what I had left, and I thought, okay, we're going to use this and make a nice soft quilt for a pet. So you can adjust the size of the strips. I oh, I also want to mention, while this is all laid out, we're going to be making a tube and then uh, cutting. So lay them out in an order you like, but do remember that this last piece will also be touching this piece after we make our tube. So for instance, I had this like this at first, and I liked that, but this piece and this piece, you know, they're kind of not really the same, but I thought I'd like this one to touch that, just to have it be a little bit different. And don't worry if you have one that doesn't look like it belongs. Like this is kind of bright, these are not, but it's going to be scattered out in on the diagonal when we're done. So let's just do this. All right, so let me just put my strips aside and I'll show you the easy way that I'm going to cut. Here's how I'm going to do it. Instead of opening up my strip and measuring 30 inches and cutting, no, I'm just leaving it folded. I am putting the folded edge on the 15 inch line because I want a 30 inch strip. So half of 30 is 15. So I'm putting that on the 15 inch line and then I'm just going to trim um, using the edge of my mat. Like that. Now, it does give two pieces of fabric instead of one bigger piece, but that's okay. As a matter of fact, you know what I'm going to do just for the fun of it? I will trim these and I will have these as a penny auction also. All right, so there's one. I want to make sure I keep my order. And I'm just going to do that to all of them. Now I'm just going to open these up and lay them out. 
in the order that they were. Now I'm going to go to my machine and I'm going to join all these strips using a quarter of an inch seam allowance. This step was incredibly quick and easy. I pressed this. What we're going to do now, and I'm going to turn it this way, I'm going to fold this up to this side. And I'm just gonna make sure it's, you know, wants to lay nice and flat. I'm not as concerned with matching the edge. If you did a little bit of something crooked, don't force the edges to match. Instead, let it lay down nice and flat. And I'm just going to go and sew across right here. And we're going to be making a tube. Now we have our lovely tube. And I am going to trim one of the edges here because no matter how carefully I cut, I didn't sew evenly and that's expected. So I'm going to trim this and I'm going to flip it and do that to the other end also. I'm just going to make five strips now and they're going to be six inches wide. There we go. Now you're going to take a pin or a safety pin and we are going to mark where we're going to cut these. I'm just going to do a straight pin. The first strip, I'm going to put a pin in this seam right up here. Now I'm going to go to this seam on the next strip, like we're going down the steps. We want this seam this time. Now we're going to end up being on the other side. So we've done this seam. So now we want the next seam, which is this guy. And same here. We're going to flip it and we want this seam. Now we're going to cut the seam off where we have a pin. Now a lot of people will just pick the stitches. I don't have time for that. Some will rip it. I don't like that. It rips the fabric. I just as soon sacrifice a half inch of fabric and I'm going to cut here. So you can use your, your mat and rotary cutter, but I'm just going to cut right under that seam line. And then I have to do the same on this one. Make sure you don't, you know, cut through all kinds of things that you're not supposed to cut through. Now here, it's this one. Like I said, especially with flannel, it clings. So make sure that you've got that opened up. Of course, you could always make this uh, just starting out with blocks, you know, squares. Oops, where was I? This one right here. See, I can't talk and do at the same time. But uh, this, this makes it that much more accurate, quicker, and easy. Okay, my last one. Get that fabric out. Now we're going to open these strips and let the magic happen. There's that one. We're going to end up with a diagonal pattern. I love it so much already. And you can have fun with patterns. I mean, obviously, if it's for a pet, you can go out and buy all kinds of pet-friendly images. Cats, dogs, paw prints, whatever. Look at, look at that. And see that bold one? It's going to be scattered throughout. You know, you don't have to do all matchy-matchy. So because we cut those seams like we did, we end up with awesome diagonals throughout. Now we just have to sew these strips together. Don't stress about, you know, matching up every intersection. Just don't worry about that. Just do the best you can. I'm going to do that and I'll be right back. You guys, this came out so cute. Where is it? Oh, here it is. Hang on. 
I just love it. I love it so much. And yes, I'm going to go ahead and put batting and a backing. Huh? How's that for surprises? So what you're going to do is you're going to cut a piece of batting. I use polyester batting for the sake of tutorials. It's cheaper for me to buy and it's lighter weight for me to ship, but cotton is always good. You, you could also just use another piece of flannel in the center for batting or an old towel or pieces of towels if you need to sew them together to make it big enough. Whatever you have on hand. Fleece is always good. You're just going to cut it bigger than the top, just roughly. I just, you know, cut a big piece. And then you're going to need a backing. And I got this in my shipment of flannels, but it's not really flannel. It's more like a brushed cotton. And it's just got a very subtle little print. So I'm going to use that for the backing. And um, all right, so you're going to start this way. Batting first, and then I'm going to do my quilt uh, backing next. And, oh, and you want the print side up. That's going to hang over the batting, but that's okay. And now I'm going to do the quilt top print side down. So you want the, you know, the right sides facing each other. If you want to skip the batting, you would just put, you know, the two pieces of fabric together and sew all around, leave an opening turn but we're going to do it with the batting included. So now I just want to make sure I have batting everywhere, and I'm pretty sure I do. I'm going to put a few pins, which I hate, because they're painful when they stick into you. Just a couple there, and then let me see down here. I should be good. Now, I'm going to leave an opening. I guess I'll do that right here. What I do, so I remember to leave an opening, is I put two pins together. Because I would never normally put two pins together. So if I see two pins together, especially when I'm going around and coming up to two pins, I know I have to stop. Two pins to me means stop right there. Some of these pins are very old and very big. All right, so I'm going to start at these two pins. I'm going to sew all around following the edge of my quilt top. That's why I put that on the top like this. So I'm just going to, you know, use the quilt top as the guide and then we can trim all that other shit after. <laughs> okay, I'm going to the machine. I'll be right back. I have all my pieces put together and now I'm going to trim, but I'm not going to trim right up to the top. I like to leave just a little bit and it kind of, um, you know, makes like a binding when we turn it and sew. I just want to take my scissors and just trim all the way around. Now, find the place with the opening, and you'll notice you can stick your hands between the fabric, or you can stick your hands between the fabric and the batting. You want to stick your hands between the two pieces of fabric, and you're going to just pull this whole thing through, and get the other corner too. Shake it out a bit. You can go in and push out your corners. Notice I didn't trim the corners. I don't do that. They tend to come apart in the wash if you get it a little bit too close. So I just leave it and, uh, you know, it makes a nice puffy corner. That's all. Now, look, look, it's so cool. Now what I do is I just kind of pull this a little bit and it kind of rolls in. And then I'm just going to top stitch all the way around. So I'm just going to start here and then, you know, tuck those in. I'm going to try to sew on the batting and I'm going to sew all the way around. You can actually go around twice if you want. And then I think I'm actually going to quilt this. Now, if you don't want to go through that, you could always hand tie here and there. But I thought it would be kind of cool instead of stitching in the ditch 
to maybe stitch on each side of the ditch. So I would just use this line as my guide and I would just go down and then back this way and then do it here and here on everything. So it would just kind of, I don't know, it would quilt it and then on the back it would look like plaid or something. So I'm going to do that. How's that sound? Sounds good to me. I'm going to close this, sew all the way around, um, and I think I will sew twice around, and then I'm going to sew on each side of every line, and then we will be done. You guys, I am quitting before doing all the quilting that I planned on doing. I did go around twice, and it was enough to make me remember just how much I hate any kind of Actual quilting, I don't like it. Yes, I could use a walking foot to make it easier, but it's just not in my heart because I don't even like things to be flattened out. I don't. So I went all the way around. I did have a couple of puckers because puckers happen in my world. You can easily do away with that by using a walking foot, but don't worry about it. Have some puckers, your cat, dog won't care. So here's the deal. Whoever wins this, or if you make your own, you can tie with some yarn or whatever cord you like, or you can go ahead and quilt this, or you really don't have to. You can throw this in the wash like this. It should be fine because all the batting is caught, but if you do want to um, you know, quilt it or tie it, you are more than welcome to do that. This is what the back side looks like. So pretty cool, pretty cool. So this is it. Let me measure it. Should be about 27, you know, somewhere between 27 and 28 inches and possibly not perfectly square. We have uh, almost 27, just a little bit under by, ooh, 26 and a quarter. Oh yeah, because of the edge, we also lost seam allowance there. So that's a nice little size for any pet or for you know, even to put a baby on or in the car for your lap. That would be cool too. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and you know, I will maybe try quilting something down the road, but it's just not my thing. It's just not. So do go check out all the auctions and the listing. This will be a penny auction. This will be a penny auction. And the kits will be buy it now. I don't know the price. I don't know how many I will have. Just go check, and sometimes they sell out pretty quick, so you do want to make sure that you grab one right away if you want one. I guess that is it. Thank you so much for watching. I'll take a few pictures and uh, just watch those at the end. Bye! Mm -hmm.